that. Come on, you gotta mix it the other way too. Yeah. Give it a real, yeah, really scramble it up. And how often do you do demonstrations here? As soon as a uh, person scrambles up the cube, I start my demonstration immediately. This is not scrambled enough. Let's really mix it up. Them spitin' right. words. Huh? <laughs> so them spitin' words. <laughs> well, some call it trash talk, I call it truth talk. <laughs> okay, now that's more like it. Take a good look at it see, so you can see how mixed up it is, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's take a look at it and see what I have here. Okay, okay. I think I know what we have to do here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll get the stopwatch set up here. We're going to let this action begin right about now. And here we go. Now, I get a lot of people come here, and they tell me a lot of these little horror stories about Rubik's Cube. And they're always telling me about how hard it is to get six sides done. But the truth of the matter is, is that instead of thinking about how to get six sides done, they should really be thinking about is how to get three layers done. Now, once you get that first layer taken care of, then you can start solving the cube by using a series of moves that are called in mathematical terms algorithms. Algorithms are moves that only affect parts of the cube and not the entire cube itself. Once you know about these algorithms and once you know how they work, then you should be able to solve any part of the cube and you don't even have to worry about messing up what you've already accomplished on the cube. Now let's see here, we got a white piece that goes up here. Oh good, top and bottom are done. Now let's see, we're now down to one, two, three pieces now. And now we're down to two pieces. Now all that's left to take care of those last two pieces are a few more little twists and turns like so. And that was done in 52 oh seconds. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs> can, can, can you reveal your secret at all? What, what? It's a little hard to, re, uh, to, to explain it, but what it is is a series of different sit moves for different situations within the cube. When you're familiar with those situations and know what moves apply to them, then, then putting this together is not a problem. Allow me to show a couple of examples for you. First, I'll set up the scenario. I'll set up another scenario on this one. Now here's one scenario right here. Here we have a scenario where you got three pieces that are in the wrong places. But here's, here's how the move works. In this move, we, we can make one piece go over here, this piece would then go down here, and this piece would then go up here. And the move goes something like this. It's like moving the center up, and then go top right twice, and then you move the center down and then top right twice, like so. Ah. Scenario number two. Here's a situation that a lot of people face. You got your pieces in the right places, but the colors are reversed. Now this can be done, this, this set of moves takes care of that. And how it's done is that it's done two, and, and this has to be done only two at a time. So it goes like this. Center up, top right, center up, top right, center up, top right twice. Then you go center down, top right, center down, top right, center down, top right, twice. Ah. Just a few little steps that, you know, that help you get to, to get to the cube a lot easier for yourself. Now, did you have a mentor that taught you this? Or no, I it... taught myself 28 years ago. How long did it take you to figure out? It took me about five weeks of research, memorization, and practice. Oh, my God, you must be great at cocktail parties. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get a lot of shock faces in there. Back in the early days, I used to embarrass stores when they sold this. Especially Great. when you had stores that had big signs that says, We bet you can't. Uh, after what they saw me doing it, they don't put that sign up there anymore. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome.